Yo, how's it going guys? Toxic Line here. And in today's video I'll basically finish up the ray gun. Uh, well, these are the previous models. I'm gonna make it even better than these. Uh, well, they look okay, but I'm gonna make this one even better. So this is the Mark II, basically Raygun 1 Mark II, uh, Generation 2, uh, whatever you prefer to say. Uh, this is the first one I ever made. It's quite old now, like 3 years or something. But yeah, I'm actually quite proud that it even looks like a Raygun. So yeah, um, by the way, just a quick thing, in case I say like any materials and we don't use them, uh, just, just to be sure maybe you should get them because like I'm not sure if we will use them or not but I just say them in case um, because I don't know how far we'll get in that tutorial I'm trying to always keep this video uh, to like around 15 minutes but if I have to go to 20 minutes I'll make it 20 minutes long Um, that's just a quick thing I wanted to add in in case you were wondering why I say you need that but we don't use that Um. So I'm just going to show you where we left off from first, and then I'll show you the materials. Okay, so this is uh, basically a little comparison, and this is where we left off from. Um, looks pretty nice, it's almost finished. And that's basically like uh, how it's going to look, like approximately. It's going to look even better though, but... Um, kind of like a side-by-side -side comparison here so you can just see uh, the difference so basically there are some changes for example right here these are metal now instead of just like thick foam and whatever if you catch what I'm trying to say and uh, we'll make these details kind of like um, these lines and buttons whatever uh, we'll mold them out of hot glue. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, but this switch right here, I'll show you how to make it with uh, like two different methods. One is with paper clips and one with uh, toothpicks. So here's the things that you'll need: foam core poster board, a exacto knife to cut the foam core poster board, a pen or a pencil, scissors copper wire or something similar like paper clips pliers to cut the paper clips or the copper wire maybe some power cord toothpicks or matches with no tip some thin cardboard that we can use for details later basically gold paper it's like shiny just for the details later on some metal scrap possibly some play-doh or something similar just to mold the things one of these ice cream thingies red spray paint and yes I know this is green but I'm using green just so you can basically get the picture mine my red is in the shed I think so I'll go and get that and use that later on, but yeah, I'm just using this so you get the picture. A hot glue gun, hot glue sticks, and of course, last of all, a uh, reference picture or something similar, uh, which I will be leaving down in the description. And I'm thinking actually about uh, about like th leaving a, a stencil link as well which I might borrow from Hyperprop's effects because um, those stencils that he have, they're awesome, like, they're perfect. By the way, just a quick thing, shout out to Hyperprop's effects for basically awesome videos and yeah, just for being awesome. Okay, so the thing we'll start off by making is this thing right here on top, so the things you'll need is a foam core a poster board first of all and then you'll need to just basically mark off that area uh, because they'll kind of 
turn into this part right here. That you could just make it one part instead of just cutting it like that, like I did, and then gluing it on separately. But I just like to do it so you get the picture that is separate. Okay, so start by drawing them out on your foam board or foam core poster board, whatever. Um, I find it the easiest way to just cut out the detail uh, on the reference picture, put it on there, start drawing, and then remove it, and then you have it. Then cut them out. Measure approximately the distance between the, like the thing on the top, where you're going to put it, how long that is, and cut a... Uh, like uh, just like a strip like that uh, in between them and I like, glue it on I I'll I'll show you that it sounds a little bit complicated but I'm I'm best at showing than explaining so sorry if sometimes you don't understand what I'm talking about cut a strip like that and then you glue it in between basically like this and um, it doesn't have to be exactly like this but as long as it fills up the space in between and now you just glue on the other side here okay so this is how the part looks like now and then just glue it on okay so this is how it looks like now and I'm thinking to start working on the gears now and then uh, start working on the strips on the chamber and move over to the parts later on so let's start okay so if we count in total there are around seven gears that were basically the things on the back so one two three four five six and maybe like seven well around seven well it also depends on how far down you want to go i kind of just stopped here but you can continue down to here if you want to like fill up everything Um, in this video I'll just do as it shows here like only this part and kind of leave this open so you'll need to cut like um I'm just take one out just to show you uh, you'll need to cut out like parts like these like basically squares in some kind and cut out seven of them and um, measurements I know you're probably asking about that uh, just a second I'll check them Okay, so it is one centimeter, like, thick, and uh, three centimeters uh, long, or uh, wide, so there you, there you have your measurements. Um, yeah, make sure to cut out seven of them. Okay, so make sure to first draw them, and then just cut them out. Okay, there you have them. It might be a good idea to paint them silver first and then glue them into into the back here, but uh, you can set them in there for now, but don't glue them just yet because it is seriously smarter to just paint them first and then put them in. Um, but now we're going to work on the strips on the chamber, so yeah. Okay, this is how it looks like when the gears are in pretty nice I did not glue them also what I recommend to do is to like kind of like squeeze the ends right here just to make them a little rounder or whatever like it is in the picture right here because they're kind of like triangles and um, yeah I recommend to just squeeze them to get that same effect uh, anyway just um, Let's continue on to the chamber. Sorry, I'm just getting carried off. Okay, so for this part, I feel like we should use paracord because paracord is basically like plastic. Um, and uh, if we'll put it like over here, then we'll see that it basically, it looks pretty smooth. Give me a second here. It's a little bit difficult to do with one hand, but it looks pretty smooth and pretty nice. So... That's why I feel like we should uh, use paracord for this part, but if you want to use just like foam board like in a Mark II, feel free to do that. Um, but just in this video and in this model, we'll use paracord. And just so you don't make any mistakes, always look at the reference picture. 
So measure approximately where it ends, where it starts, whatever. So there's three lines. Two of them are longer than the one in the middle. And um, you'll have to like... The f first one is... It's long. Then the middle one is short. And the third one is the longest. And then comes the lines. So just keep that in mind. I've managed to glue onto the power cord now. Oh, damn, that took hell longer than it should have. I used like 30 minutes or something and I burned my finger. So, that's awesome. Uh, it looks actually pretty nice. Um, I'm quite proud of it. Um, well, now I think we should make the parts on the side, like the details. So, um, let's get our ice cream thingy and uh, our Play-Doh. And let's mold it. Okay, so first of all, you need to make something decently flat enough. Then you take your ice cream thingy and you just basically press it down in there. Might be difficult, especially with one hand, but I'm just gonna show you once I've pressed it down there. Okay, so this is how it looks like. Now I'm just gonna pull it out of the mold and. Uh, We'll fill it with hot glue. That's the best uh, thing I could think of. Just give me a second, I'll just pull it out. Looks nice. And uh, we'll have to mold this like two times or so because it's not just long enough. Um, uh, yeah, like there's three details like this, so I kind of have to mold them three times just to be perfect. So I'll just do that. I just like yeah, put the glue in there so I'm just waiting for it to dry and so I can take it out and customize it to the length I need it in so now it's just to play the waiting game and just a quick thing it was a complete fail I guess you can't really mold it um, with hot glue especially like thin things like that um, but we are going to mold the like button or whatever so um, I just use the hot glue stick to just push down and make something like that and now I'll just fill it up with hot glue like so and now we just wait this is how the button turned out or the like the thing you turn basically on the gun well, it's pretty nice, like, yeah, it doesn't look perfect, but it is decent enough. So, I'll find a way how to make those things on the side in just a second. Okay, so, the parts on the side, I decided to just take two cold metal plates and my battery pack, or my, uh, like, you know these, like, packs where you just connect your phone and you charge them? Yeah, I took one of those and then I used my fake iPhone 7 to kind of like just press down on it because it is cold as well and metallic on the back. Uh, so this is what I got. Now I just need to kind of just cut it the right size and I have them. And now I'll just have to cut the strips. I glued on the like button whatever here and now I have six of these strips to glue on the side here and um, you could paint them before gluing on but I'm just gonna glue them on now I glued on the like details on one of the sides but not the other yet but I will do it right now this is how it looks like pretty nice maybe not the best but it looks decent enough okay so now the sides are finished and uh, well I don't know really what to do else now I think we could make the like details on the grip and uh, continue or like start on making the things here that I don't know what these are called but you know these um, uh, yeah, whatever those are, just start making those and uh, 
basically finish up the ray gun and then paint it if I have paint left though. For making the detailed grip I'll use some thin cardboard and uh, you'll have to trace out basically the uh, or some rectangles um, that are small enough like approximately that size and then you start by the trigger and start like putting them down till approximately right here um, both sides and that makes it look even better okay here are the cardboard strips the thin cardboard strips uh, I'll be using them right now on the side here on the handle and I'll be back when I'm done now the handle is finished this is how it looks like it feels really nice as well so uh, let's move over to these things now get your metal scrap with your pliers and make some shapes that basically look like these for the back for those pieces right there make sure to measure the distance between here and here like this distance and bend them the right way like this is the length of it and this should be the thickness after you made them and you'll have to just glue them onto there and make sure to look at the reference picture just to don't make any mistakes and just make sure to find a way to glue them kinda to the back so it's uh, sitting tight and not falling off later on and now we're gonna make the kinda like the switch right here and uh, what you'll need is um, copper wire and your pliers let me just get that so there's actually three different ways of doing it the first one is with copper wire or paper clips you basically make something that looks like this and then you put glue onto here to make kinda like a knob or whatever like circle and uh, then you just put it in the right place or you can take a match with no tip and do the same thing and cut off uh, so it's like perfectly sized uh, or you can take a toothpick do the same thing cut it off and yeah well in this video I'll use a uh, copper wire so um, I'll show how it looks like after I put glue onto it okay so this is how it looks like and now I'll just uh, set it in the right place or like just stick it in there and I'll show you how that looks like now just to end it off we'll make the thing right here out of cardboard and glue it into there just so it doesn't look that rough same with these pieces right here and make a circle right here and kind of like just glue it onto there so you don't see the little like dot right here that we use to make the circle so Let's get started with first of all making the cardboard meter. And then just put them in there, like in the right spot right here, and glue them in there with hot glue. And that's how it looks like when you put in the cardboard pieces. And guys, for the circles, uh, I recommend to use a tool like this. I do not know what this is called in English, but if you do know, Please let me know down in the comments, I'd highly appreciate it. And uh, basically just make a medium circle, uh, like, uh, it's pretty small basically, just to cover up the hole and uh, make it look like it's actually a part of the gun. Well, it technically is, but um, it doesn't have to be perfect just as long as it covers up the hole and looks like it's close enough then you already did a good job so let's me let me just do that okay guys so it's basically finished up this is how it looks like this is the best gun I've made like the ray gun best ray gun I've ever made this is the generation 3 I think um, well basically I'm not gonna paint it in this video because it's already too long but I'll make a dedicated uh, painting video to to this ray gun uh, maybe a little bit later I'll explain everything detailed there like extremely detailed and uh, whatever you need to do and etc and uh, remember guys stay awesome keep doing what you're good at and don't give a shit about the haters but if they do get on your neck 
then use their own words against themselves. And they hate you, and they hate us, because they ain't us. Tell me pretty lies, look me in the face, tell me that you love me, even if it's